I wanna talk about manual camera apps for Android devices. In my recent Nexus 6P review, I talked a lot about the camera and of course mentioned the camera app that is provided with Marshmallow uh, on the Nexus 6P. And really it's very disappointing and quite limited. Uh, so there were a lot of questions and comments down below of what manual camera apps I recommend and some people were offering some different suggestions. So I thought it'd be fun to take a few moments and walk through a couple of different apps that I've used and share my experiences with them. Before we get that though, we are, we're currently looking at the LG V10, which like the LG G4, offers wonderful native manual camera control. Just, it's just built in. Now, this isn't the only phone and uh, manufacturer that does this, there are others, but this is the one I have, and I'm using this kind of as an example, and it's what's in the back of my mind as I work through the other ones. So the things it offers, hard to see because of the white here, but white balance. Uh, manual focus to control. You can go from infinity to macro. And I do have a nice tips video on how to get better pictures from cameras like this that provide some of these different controls. So I think it's worth watching. I'll put a link to that right down below. You can of course control your ISO and you can control your shutter speed from a very fast one six thousandth of a second to a very long 30 full seconds, which is great for long exposure, light painting, steel wool photography, lots of different things. And I've done that with this phone and I've been really happy, even have been able to capture the stars in the sky successfully. Uh, so that's quite nice. Now, I do shoot with this camera and leave it in manual control 99% of the time, but that doesn't mean that I'm carefully adjusting all of these settings every time. In fact, I'm usually, let's turn the exposure lock back off. I'm usually allowing the camera to set pretty much everything and often just changing the exposure compensation. So that is saying, no, I think the scene should be a little bit darker or a little bit brighter from what the camera is trying to capture. Oftentimes with the LGs, a little bit darker because it does seem to tend to overexpose and quickly lose data in the brighter areas of the image. So those are our settings and across the top, it's a little hidden from you, but it's reporting back all of the settings that I have options of down below. And it works quite nice. Now let's look at some apps on the Nexus or other devices that don't have this control built in and see what we can get. The apps that we're gonna talk about, Camera FV5, AZ Camera, Manual Camera, and ProShot. I'll put links to each of these right down below. If there's one that is your favorite, one of these, let us know in the comments. And if there's one I've missed that you'd like to hear my opinion on at some point in the future, leave uh, that name down below and tell me why it's your favorite. We're gonna jump right in here to camera FV5. They also make Cinema FV5, which I've used on other devices before and found to be quite decent. But I have to say, it does not work very well currently on the Nexus 6P and Marshmallow. Now, there were a few of these apps that just a week ago crashed repeatedly, but those developers have updated them. They're working much better now. Uh, I, I, I believe this one has been updated. Well, I should say all of them are the current offerings from the developers. And I even believe camera FV5 has a little list that says it's now been made compatible, but I'm having a lot of issues with this app. And at this time, I can't really recommend it. You can see it's a black screen. We should see something here. We're in a programmed auto mode, which basically lets the camera set all of the settings. So it should be able to see what's over here. But if we go to shutter speed and we go to uh, a longer shutter speed, you can see one fifth of a second is available to us. And now we can actually see something but I can't focus even though it's in autofocus. And if I go to manual focus, I can drag up and down on the screen to change focus. And then you can see that I can get focused that way. We also have our exposure uh, setting and ISO uh, auto all the way up. So we can put that on auto and see what happens. Should be about the same, sounds good. And we have our exposure compensation. Now this does nothing. Uh, but as we'll see in the other apps in a minute, none of their exposure compensation dials work. So I think that has something to do with how the camera two API is implemented. I don't really know. I'm getting out of my area of expertise, but I'm not going to hold it against any one of these since none of them can do it. Uh, and we have this exposure indicator right here, but of course that doesn't do anything either. So no changes there. And if I wanted to take a picture, this looks like the button that does it, 
but nothing happens, even though it lights up nicely like so. So there are more options we can go into and choose our resolution, our review. We can set our file size. All of these do allow recording of raw files. So I may or may not mention that again, but all of the apps that we're gonna go through do. One of the things that's nice about this viewfinder is you can have a ton of different overlays in it as well, including the golden spirals, which really can help you set up for a nice composition. But none of that really matters because at this time, again, we're getting nothing. So that's all I'm gonna talk about from the camera FV5 right now. And at some point, maybe I'll let you know that it's been updated. AZ camera, this works better. Uh, first, we've got our autofocus, white balance, ISO, and our shutter speed. Notice in our shutter speed here, if I tap this, uh, it brings up this little dial right here. All of them do that. The dial changes for the values of whatever you're adjusting. Our slowest shutter speed on any of these apps, with one exception we'll get to in a minute, is 0.23 seconds. So not very slow. Maybe just starting to get into the realm of where you could do some blurry waterfall pictures. Uh, but really not very exciting. We have our ISO change, of course, and if we half press, or if we press for half a second and let go, it sets it back to default settings and we can take a picture. And there you go, and you can see the preview just landed right up there. Let's take a picture of my hand so you can see a clear difference in that little preview. There's my hand, isn't that wonderful? So pretty straightforward, we could hit these little dot, dot, dots right here, sorry. I'm trying to use the stylus because it keeps my greasy finger off the screen, but it doesn't work so good. We can switch to uh, front or back facing camera. We can turn our flash on auto, on or off. We can set up bracketing, so you could take multiple shots at different exposure settings. And we can set up our grid. And if we turn this bracketing back off for a second, we can shoot JPEG plus RAW as it tells you there. Setting our metering modes and our time sorry, our timer, three or 10 seconds right down there. All this looks pretty good. And as I said, it's certainly a step up from the last app because it actually does take a picture. We can switch into video. Now I've experienced a few crashes switching into video on this, but the last couple of times uh, it has seemed to work fairly well. And we can hit record. We get a little indicator up here and we should be able to still make changes while we're recording. And that is pretty nice. Now. As I said, no exposure compensation is provided in any of these, but ISO is the easiest way to adjust that if you're not already at its lowest setting to dial it down a little bit to get a slightly darker look or up if you're not already at its highest. These do get very noisy very quickly, so you wanna watch out for those higher ISOs on these tiny little sensors, but it works and it allows you to make those adjustments. And we can go into our settings right here we got a histogram, setting the screen on the max brightness, choosing your resolutions if you want to shoot at something slightly under the max resolutions. There's our exposure bracketing and of course geotagging, volume button, and that other app, AZ Screen Recorder, I may have mentioned, uh, I really like. It's a great way to record your screen. You don't have to be rooted. So that's all pretty nice. That was AZ Camera, works decently. Now let's take a look at Manual Camera which I think has one of the nicest and cleanest interfaces of all of them. Right away, you come up with this nice exposure compensation dial, which I said is what I use most of the time, but here, once again, we are seeing it not working. So again, I don't believe that's a fault of any of these apps. It's just the way it's been implemented. Over on the right, we have our flash on or off, auto, our white balance, our focus distance indicator. Now again, over here on the right, with some of these options, we get a little settings dial. This one I find is interesting because Focus is usually measured in you know, a distance up to infinity. What exactly is, somebody please tell me in the comments, 50% of infinity, because that's really what this dial is saying. But you get the idea and you can certainly still use it. You just turn it, lower numbers or closer until you get to macro, higher numbers until you get to infinity. I guess it makes sense in some ways because you don't know what infinity, well, I don't know. We can talk about it in the comments. Uh, you got your ISO, of course, which you can adjust, and your shutter speed. And again, we'll see at the slower, we're limited to one fifth of a second. So that's the same. All of these are right about that same amount as the slowest, except this one offers fastest 64 thousandth of a second. And of course, we can come back to our exposure compensation, which doesn't work. Take a picture. Let's see if we lost our focus. We have. So let's hold down on that till we're back in auto and touch. 
wake back up, focus time. Let's get it back in auto on many of these, including, there we go, exposure compensation. It's back and we can take a picture, nice satisfying click, and then we can see that picture up there in the preview. We come in here to this gear icon and we have our aspect ratio and file size. We can shoot JPEG and RAW as we saw on the other ones. We can turn a bunch of effects on like mono, sepia, all of these until you turn them back off. And over here on the right, you can do this kind of cool, oh, that was, I'm oh, sorry, I always forget what that is. Good, you can see the mess that we're working with right now. So quick, let's switch back before you study that in too much detail. Um, so that was that one. And then max brightness, uh, we saw that someplace else. A timer of two or 10 seconds and a grid rule of thirds of the golden ratio or the diagonal or the grid off. And then that turns it back off except for our GPS, sounds, image browser, and white mounts modes. And let's go back and let's get that 10 second timer off. So pretty straightforward, does what it's supposed to, but there is no video options. Can't shoot video with this app. It is for photos only. So let's come back out of here. And now let's talk a little bit about ProShot. ProShot is probably the most full featured. Its interface isn't quite as straightforward as some of the other ones, but it's still very good. Hard to see, I think you can see it. Across the top here, we have our aspect ratio right away. So if you're shooting for Instagram, the old school Instagram, now that you can shoot for uh, panorama if you want, but if you wanted to, you can set it right there, 16 by nine, and you can even set up a custom, which I'm not exactly sure how you do that, but it's available to you. Let's stay, oops, let's stay with 16 by nine. Um, and it's so interesting that it's cutting off so much of the bottom when we do 16 by nine. I'm a little surprised by that. Uh, so we can of course click to set our focus and our exposure area as well. And it's very fast, very responsive. You can see that that works nicely. And we have our settings over here with our ISO and this from 100 down to 7,500 and our white balance that we saw before and our flash, including we can turn the light on. Now there's one other app you can do that as well, um, but I can't remember which one it is. If you bug me in the comments, I will figure it out and put it down. But now this gets a little bit more interesting when you hit P up here, because you can go into full manual mode and now notice that I have my shutter speed listed here. None of these allow you to control your aperture. If you've been wondering about that, all of these lenses are fixed aperture. Of course, if you're shooting on the same camera, the uh, same phone. So our slowest shutter speed, again, we're seeing that 0.2 seconds, which is just about the same on all of them, all the way up to 64,000. Uh, and what else did it change when we went into manual mode? I think that's pretty much it. But we also have these custom modes where you can set up custom settings that you will instantly get back into. Maybe an Instagram setting where it's one-to-one -one and it's always in black and white because you are a purist and you only fill your Instagram feed with black and white. Uh, and I don't know exactly how you set these, but I think it's pretty neat that it does. That's much more like your traditional DSLRs today that offer that. But we can go back to, let's, let's leave it on M for now. If we come down here to this little option, we have we're in normal mode, but we also have bulb mode, which they call light painting, which then does give you much longer shutter speeds. You can see we're currently at uh, two seconds. You go to four, 10, 30, and even infinity seconds. Now, a caveat, these do not appear to be exactly the same as opening your shutter. It seems to be doing more of a stacking or a live preview but it's still pretty neat that it's here. I've tested it out a couple of times. I haven't made any interesting pictures with it, but um, let's do. You can see that it slowly gets brighter and you can see some of the blurriness until it's gone. And if we click this little button there, that's what that beautiful work of art is that I just made. And it does report though correctly to you the number of seconds, the file size, ISO, all of that stuff. So we can go oops, back here. So we're back into the camera app now. Yep, and it's still working. So that's bulb mode, which gives you that. We also have a time-lapse mode, which we saw in an earlier uh, app as well, that this one has an added advantage, advantage though. It will prevent or provide for you a series of still images, or it will automatically turn those still images into a video, which is nice. Uh, and you can choose what playback that video will be at.
and we have our timers across the top. And then of course this does shoot video as well and we have our sizes from 720 up to 4K, our frames per second, and the quali quality or you could consider that the bit rate and that all seems to work decently as well. So I'm recording a video right now and there is some, oh no, I wasn't recording a video. Now let's hit that. And now we're recording a video. We get our level indicator of audio at the top and we can see what we're in 4K, 30 frames a second. Uh, and we can change our settings while we're recording this video so that we get a uh, different look, different exposure values, uh, which is pretty nice. If you're shooting at 1 30th of a second, you should technically be at 1 60th. And so that means our ISO we should put on auto to let it expose, or let's see where 400 is. That kind of looks nice, a little dark, but so all of that was changed while I was recording and I can hit this now to stop recording and it takes just a second and we should be able to see that over here in the video player. So definitely the most full featured. I don't believe this app has crashed on me at all during this time, um, but um, your mileage may vary depending on what device you're using it on. And I'm not sure that if there's anything else, then I can switch back to photo mode now by just clicking that little dot right there. So that was a mostly complete look at the different camera, manual camera apps that I've found for Android devices. Again, if you've got a favorite one, leave it down in the comments and let us know why it's your favorite. And if you can tell me what half of infinity is, I'll be very appreciative. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye. Thank you.